שלכם, צעקו ורם שפד here from King David's Tomb, King David's Kabbalah.com. We are in פרשת ויקל פיקודי, and we're going to discuss an article about Shabbat from the Zohar of Vayakel. The Zohar explains that Shabbat can be looked as Shin, but what is the Shin and what is the but? So the Zohar, the Shin, is the forefathers, Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. As we learned previously, that Avraham stands for the pillar of the Chesed, right pillar, Yitzhak for the pillar of Gvura, judgment, the left side, and Yaakov is the middle pillar, which is the mercy. And Those three pillars are within the letter of Shin. Where does it go to? It goes to the Bat. Bat, in Hebrew, is a daughter. Who is that daughter? The Malchut. The Sira of Malchut that the three pillars are bringing the abundance to. So according to that article, the principle of Shabbat is creating unity of the ten Sfirot, specifically the three pillars that are bringing all the abundance to the Malchut. Then the Zohar brings the concept of Shabbat HaGadol. Shabbat HaGadol is the way we call Shabbat before Pesach. What is the special quality of that Shabbat before Pesach that we call Shabbat HaGadol? That will be a whole discussion, but to sum up in short, it is a certain point of growth of the Malchut, that we know that the moon is a manifestation of the Malchut, and like the moon, have the time that it is disappearing, which is basically around Rosh Chodesh. And then in the middle of the Chodesh is the full moon. So the growth of the moon from Rosh Chodesh until the Tetvav, the 15th of the Chodesh, the Hebrew calendar, of course. So then that will symbolize for us the growth of the Malchut. And the Tenth day, this is in, in Egypt, when I'm Israel world in Egypt, the Shabbat HaGadol was in the tenth of Nisan, which is a very important point of time, and that's why Hashem chose that day that they will take the lamb for the sacrifice of Pesach. That's a big discussion over that, but Here, the Zohar is mentioning the Shabbat HaGadol and says, what about that? Shabbat HaGadol is up above. is not down below like the regular location of Shabbat, that is the Malchut, that is under all of the Sfirot. So, it is true. But, this is exactly what we're talking about. That... The starting point of the Malchut is in the bottom. And through our meditation, through our work, we are bringing up the Malchut until it reaches the point that it is equal to the Iran Pin. And that was the same in the beginning of the creation. When Hashem created the sun and the moon, it says, Shnei Amerot Agdolim, the two big luminaries. So those two big luminaries, the sun and the moon, were equal in that point of time. Then afterwards, the moon was criticizing, how can it be that we are equal? So the Hashem told the moon, ah, you're criticizing, so you have to minimize yourself. And it became to be smaller. And that concept is a very, very big concept in the Kabbalah. Many, many discussions over that. And 
obviously for sure it is a parable should not be understood as a physical story it's not a physical history of the world it is a spiritual concept that needs to be learned anyhow going back to the Zohar over here in Vayakel so the Zohar this is the same point that we say when we say I'm a pill every night before Kriyat Shema Lamita before we're going to sleep we have the Bracha of I'm a pill and we say there I'm a ear le'ishon bat ayin the one that is enlightening illuminating the ishon bat ayin literally ishon bat ayin means the the point within the eye so that point that black point inside of the eye is also a representation of the Malchut. That's why we call it Bat Ein, Bas Ein in the Ashkenaz pronunciation. Now, then the Zohar says that the world to come, al Madati, is a chamber for that point of Malchut. In other words, when we are elevating the Malchut, the Malchut have to reach a certain point, a certain height. To stay in that height, it goes into a chamber. And that chamber is the concept of Alma Deati, the world to come. Now, I just want to clarify that for people that are in the beginning of the process of learning those concepts, you hear about the world to come, you think about future to come, not now. It's not something that is happening now, it will be in the future. So we think about physical timeline and we look further away for the world to come. But according to Kabbalah, the world to come is coming every moment, is coming to the receptacle, the vessels, the abundance that comes down. This is the world to come. So the higher source of abundance, this is the world to come. And by the way, I want to make a point that is very significant for me, that it's very important for us to put our mind and think, and contemplate on the concept of the world to come. And my rabbi, Enuka Shlita, Vishlomo, Yuda Berry, um, he said that whoever is setting in his mind on the world to come, his mind will be settled in this world. So for many people that they are suffering from the fact that their mind is not settled and wanders all around, the answer for that is to settle our mind and think about the world to come. As much as we do that, our mind will be settled in this world. Going back to the Zohar, the Zohar says that the Malchut that went up, it becomes to be in the height of the forefathers, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. And again, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov is not talking about physical person that lived in this world many years ago. We're talking about the spiritual concepts of Chesed, Gvura, and Tiferet. Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov are the Chesed and Gvura and Tiferet. They made themselves to be Merkava to those Sfirot, as you can read about it in the introduction of the Siddur Zichon David. And all of that is happening in Shabbat, that the Malchut rises up and goes into a chamber that is called the world to come, Alma Deati, and it is the height of the Chesed Gvur and Tiferet, and that creates a higher level of unity. And this is the special quality in Shabbat. So if you think, contemplate, meditate on those concepts in Shabbat, all through Shabbat, you can do it before tefillah, after tefillah, 
before the meal, within the meal, after the meal, whenever, whenever you have time, as much as you do that, to contemplate about those concepts, about those, this elevation and the higher level of unity, you become to be part of the process more and more. And you can actually experience the flow of the abundance. You can experience the growth of the Malchut. You can reach a level that you are unifying your soul with the Malchut and you actually feel that elevation. So I hope and pray that all of you listeners, friends, Bezrat Hashem will have the merit to experience those wonderful meditations, practice them, experience them, and that together we will unite in that elevation, in that chamber of the world to come. Bezrat Hashem. Many, many blessings. Thank you very much for listening. And feel free to share it with your friends and family.